Hello fellow wargamers and history buffs. Today I am excited to share with you a sneak peek at the new Glory and Empire series game. This is First Victories, uh, Wellington versus Napoleon from Lock and Load Games. Let's crack it open and see what we find. So when I open the box, uh, that the shipping box from Lock and Load, these are the components that came uh, with it here we had a couple of pairs of ten-sided dice we've got a booklet here called assault on the western ridge and then of course we've got the box itself here with the other game components so let's open this up and see what we've got inside so we can talk a little bit about the box here and the first thing is it's very substantial uh, the components everything else it feels like it weighs probably a little less than 10 pounds here <laughs> so um, it's a pretty deep box um, nice finish on it nice artwork and uh, then here on the back it's got a description of the game and then some pictures of the game components now they're saying the uh, complexity is here about uh, midway um, on their scale and then it has a very high playability time is two to four hours um, and so let's open it up and see now this particular um, set that they sent me is actually their prototype um, from my understanding um, it should be pretty much what you're going to get when you get the final version the only thing that they mentioned to me was that the maps might use a different paper and maybe some of the coloration might be a little different uh, from this prototype to the final version. So first thing we have here, it looks like we've got a map. This must be for Vimero, since it's very conveniently marked here on the, uh, on the map. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. And then we've got the uh, book here. This must be uh, what's going on talking about the battles specifically. This is for Rolissa. Rolissa, I think, is how it's pronounced. It's got history, um, some dispositions, maybe. Scenario booklets for Vimero. All right, setup. All right, and then the information here for maybe the solo assist, how to use that. Okay. So nice, I mean, the. Uh, rules and the booklet nice uh, slick paper here full color um, and uh, and sort of spiral bound um, so there's that all right here then we've got using it looks like the similar materials we've got the core rule book and I've taken a look at this a little bit uh, they have a PDF that you can download and once again, same type of thing here with that sort of slick, glossy paper and um, full color, kind of going through all of the particulars. And as I recall, having scanned through this, they had a, a couple of different levels of complexity um, for a simpler type of a game and then a more complicated game uh, as you go on adding other elements to it. So this is a rather considerable uh, booklet here. Well, wow, lots of pages. <laughs> um, so we'll have to have to pour through that. All right. Now uh, they had listed for the sort of Kickstarter. I know they used somebody other than Kickstarter, but Kickstarter is what everyone's familiar with. They had these um, upgrades, and so they were they hit their marks. So these look like the um, sort of uh, overlays that you would have or you could use for your artillery range and your artillery um, shot patterns or howitzer uh, splatter patterns here from the looks of it. So these are here. They're just made out of just a clear acrylic with... Uh, hex grid on them and then cut out to kind of fit the pattern uh, for the shot. 
All right, here we've got another map. And this one I'm going to, I'm not sure if this is, oh, so yeah, so this is the map for Rolissa. Um, so we'll take a look at that when we look at all the maps. And now we get into counters. All right. So these look like the different informational counters. Now these are, these particular ones are half inch. And as you can see, <laughs> they are well cut and they just fall right out of the, uh, out of the sheet there. Um, as I said, the colors might be slightly different between this version and the final version based on what the folks at Lock and Load told me. Um, but we've got then it looks like those, the blue ones must have been informational counters for the French. These must be then informational counters for the uh, British and their allies. And here then we have um, counters for the units. And here these look like they're maybe uh, three-fifths of an inch um, size counters. And this looks like a, a liter counter of some sort. And once again, the counters just, it fell right out of the counter sheet. It just popped right out. Um, so they're certainly well cut out. And as I recall, they're using like a step system here. So when the unit takes a loss, you will flip it over. And then if it uh, doesn't have any more steps, it's, it's eliminated. So there's one set of counters. And then here we've got another counter. And the counters are falling out here. So this must be the British. Nope, no, these are the French. <laughs> All right, and so here we can see a counter there. So they're pretty clear to read. Now my understanding is all the information is right here on the front of the counter, so you don't need to flip it over. You're only gonna flip it over when it's taken a loss, and it looks like the values decrease as it takes that loss. So you don't have to do any calculations. Um, they're already kind of done for you here on the, on the track. And so there's our various, I'm presuming, French units. All right, digging a little deeper here. What do we find? We've got um, player aids. So here is, looks like your terrain effects chart movement, fire chart, and some other modifier charts here. So it looks like we got one of these. There is a turn record chart for Vimero, and then there's the turn record chart for Rolissa. French artillery, so this must be how you keep track of your ammunition expenditures. And they've got it for both the French and the British artillery. So I'm guessing you've got to maybe make a copy of it. I'm not sure how that works. All right, here we've got another player A card with a sequence of play, taking you through the process here. So that's one card. All right, and then here we have a fold out with. Uh, the charts. It looks like some of the charts we've already seen. Yep. But in like a fold out and looks like there's hmm, is there more than one? There's one of those and then this one is looks like it's informational uh, for the uh, what the different markings on the counters mean and then the morale state recovery process, artillery zones, and then looks like we've got, what, some charge information for what the charge zones are, and then skirmish zones as well. Okay, so there's one of those. And then we've got like a maneuver chart, it looks like here, how things move from one spot to another or change formation. 
So a lot of different things here on how they go through their evolutions from line to column and column to line, etc. Right. So there's one of those. All right. And then here it looks like we've got a order of battle for both Rulissa and Vimero. This is uh, the allies. And then we've got for the French of Vimero and then Rulissa down here. All right. So that's it as far as the charts go. A little deeper into the box here, we've got um, different cards, action cards, and we've got command cards, and then here, what's this? These must be cards that talk about the particular units themselves, so there's a little bit of history there, interesting. Not sure what those are used for yet. And then here we've got the solo assist cards. Well, let's take a look at the, let's un, unwrap these and see what they look like. All right, after uh, unwrapping these, um, the cards themselves are a uh, larger size, so larger than a regular playing card. Um, probably similar to a lot of the different cards that we see with some of the card-driven games. Now, this particular set of cards, it looks like, are all, uh, both of these are all part of what looks like the solo assistant um, element of the game. So, um, one of the uh, sort of interesting features is they've really gone to some lengths to have a, um, a way for, if you're going to be playing the solitaire, um, you could then have, I don't know if it's a bot necessarily, but it looks like the different um, leaders that are involved have some sort of rating and then based on uh, situation are going to be uh, behaving in a particular way. So kind of interesting. I'm excited to explore that a little bit, um, but that's what this set of cards looks like. And then all of these other action cards then must fit in with that solo assist um, game system. So I'm not familiar with that, um, but same sort of thing. Cards are nice, clear, easy to read, uh, nice finish on them as well. So those are those two for the solo assist. Now the next set of cards uh, that were here are ones that look like they are ones for the individual units. Um, and so you have a card here that's got the image from the counter, and then on the back it has a little bit of the history uh, when this unit was uh, raised, uh, when it was disbanded, where it fought. Um, and so we have this here for, looks like all of the units that were involved. The cards themselves have a nice kind of linen finish to them. Um, and then as I said, they've got some information about each of the particular units. So that's kind of a, a nice thing. Um, and it looks like we've got everything here for the French. And then over here, we have the British and their allies. Same type of thing here, where it's got the counters on the front and then details about the uh, particular unit and what all it did everywhere in the Napoleonic Wars. Very cool. Now, continuing our exploration here, in the bottom of the box is a set for card holders. Looks like there's a spot here where you could keep your dice. Um, and then here around the box, there's some artwork for that, as well as, I guess, some of the other games that Lock and Load Publishing does and then the information about credits for this game. So it looks like our cards can just go in here for the different groups. Now, looking at the maps, we've got the first one here. This is for Rulissa. Um, here the map itself is uh, about 
uh, 22 inches long and 17 inches wide. And the mat material itself, it's uh, that sort of uh, almost like a plastic finish on it. Now, I'm not sure, based on what the folks at Lock and Load told me, they might be using a different paper um, for the actual maps. This is just the prototype. Um, but I think, the, for the most part, the artwork is going to be the same. So here we can kind of take a look at it in some more detail. And you can see that it's got the various types of terrain, roads, and rivers, and things like that. For those of you that are used to a lot of these Napoleonic types of games, we can see that same kind of uh, art style with the uh, sort of three-dimensional uh, look of the trees and the buildings and whatnot. And here we're looking at the map for Vimero. Now this particular map is larger than the previous one for Alyssa. This particular map is about 34 inches long and 22 inches wide. It's made out of a similar material as the uh, as the Relissa map I just showed you. It kind of has a plastic kind of uh, glossy feel to it. As I said, Lock and Load might be using different material for the maps, but at least you can get a sense of what they look like. And here with the maps, the hexes themselves are a little larger because uh, they're using uh, like, it looks like a 5 8 size hex uh, counter. Um, and we can see that the hexes for the most part are numbered. Uh, it looks like we have different coloration for the hexes kind of indicating uh, the changes in elevation and uh, maybe some of the different slopes that are involved here on this, uh, on this map. Now I put a couple of counters down on the map just to kind of get a sense for how well they fit. Uh, I know sometimes with these larger size counters, they don't always fit in the hex and they'll sometimes bump, bumps into other counters and jostle them around. But it looks like these are appropriately sized so you can be in different formations and um, and you're not going to be then jostling the counter next to you. Um, so that's, that's good. That's a well-proportioned um, uh, hexes then for the counters. And finally, the last little element that was included with the uh, game was this assault on the Western Ridge. Um, now, it also included then this map, and it looks like this map is a continuation of the Vimero map. So it looks like it goes off and adds uh, some additional area that you can then use uh, for the game. I hope you've enjoyed this little preview of this game. And uh, Lock and Load has told me that all of the different items that were part of the stretch goals had been met. And uh, most of them were included in this set that they sent me. Um, and they'll be going out to everyone who done the initial order as well as to anyone who's ordering the game in the future. Uh, they're going to be offering a late funding uh, option for folks here towards the tail end of February, early part of March. So if you missed the initial order process, you can get in on that. I'll try to have a link below, uh, at least to lock and load, um, and you can follow it up there on their website. Um, and then the game itself is going to production, and it should be available for folks uh, late part of June, early July, 2023. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the little uh, solo assist cards look like a very interesting concept. I know a lot of us play these games uh, solitaire, and so having something that can help guide us or add some other element to it, I think should be very entertaining. It looked like they were saying they had a high um, solitaire playability, and so uh, I'm looking forward to giving that a shot. Of course, if you uh, like this sort of stuff, uh, go ahead and hit the like button. 
Um, if you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and make those below. If you haven't subscribed, what's holding you back? Come on, hit that subscribe button. Uh, of course, if you want to learn more about this particular game, I did a rather lengthy interview with the designer, Terry Doherty, and you can follow the link over there. Um, and that's going to take you to that, and you can watch that to get some more uh, answers on this. Of course, until our next episode, be well. Thank you.